Change is on its way for Heroic Anthem KVK and the Season of Conquest. In the official Rise of Kingdoms Discord, one of the community managers has posted a series of things that they are thinking about changing and that are definitely going to change about KVK. So stick around in this video for our breakdown as to whether or not these changes are in fact going to address the core problem that players are having with this version of KVK. And I think there's some really important stuff we need to talk about, about why people play Rise of Kingdoms. Yeah, this video, this is actually a really important one. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. And I like to share that at the start of every video because although only a small number of videos each month are technically the sponsored videos, I want to be transparent about the fact that, yes, some of my videos are, in fact, sponsored, but no, there's absolutely no input whatsoever to the topics I talk about, what I say in my videos, and so on. And so in this video, we're going to be very transparent about my opinion about Heroic Anthem KVK and the things that I think are causing players a lot of pain. So with that said, I think a lot of Heroic Anthem KVK has a lot of potential and can be very fun, and in fact, there's some opportunity to just tweak some things that will make a huge, huge difference in the player experience. So to understand that, we're going to unpack why it is players are having a hard time with uh, Heroic Anthem KVK, some players anyways, and we're going to talk about these changes and whether or not they are going to make the difference. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, hey, consider smashing that subscribe button for the latest and greatest news as soon as it lands. I literally, however... As soon as it lands, however, I literally sat on this news, I don't normally do this, for for about 15 or 16 hours I've been struggling with exactly what I want to say and how I want to say it, and I actually recorded a video, edited it, shared it with some of the folks that helped me run my Discord, and they were like, well, just cool, hold on, and I, I actually am refilming the video based on their feedback. So I've put a lot of thought in what I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to share with you along the way my understanding of what needs to change about Heroic Anthem to make it fun for everyone. Because that's ultimately what we should be hunting for here. A great experience for everybody that's playing. And I think that balance, it's hard to obtain, but I think it's totally achievable. So let's first, however, talk about this concern that the Rise of Kingdoms community has been expressing. And I've seen this, and it's total nonsense, which is that the developers don't care about free-to-play players. And that's totally bogus. Because here's the thing, okay? Although I am not one of the developers, and I certainly don't know what they're thinking, right? I don't step into their shoes, and I have the opportunity to chat with them every now and then, which is really, I really appreciate that. Um, I think I would assume that they understand that this game like 1% of people spend money, and, and it's a collection game. And in this collection game, the other 99% of people are working on a collection, and the promise of a game like this, of a free-to-play game, is that you can have a lot of the same things a pay-to-win player can have, but you can't have all of it, and it takes you longer to get it. So you can only do some of what a pay-to-win player can do, some of the time, but not everything. So, for example, what you could do before Heroic Anthem KVK is you could go all in on infantry, as an example. And when the infantry meta rolls around, you've saved up your sculptures, you've been working on your infantry equipment, and even as a free-to-play player in the end game, you could lead rallies, be a garrison captain, and you might have lower VIP, and you might have slightly less impressive equipment. Okay, I get it. But for that period of time, you could be in that meta and, and do what the big spenders are doing, right? You could lead the rallies, you could be the garrison captain. And with Heroic Anthem, all of that goes away, right? The, that core promise of what I think makes Rise of Kingdoms exciting for everybody as a collection game, because yeah, I know it's a war game, but, but let's face it, right? Like you collect troops, you collect resources, you collect commanders, well, what else you collect? Equipment. There's a lot of things you're actually just collecting in this game, and a lot of people play primarily for the collection, and a part of what you could do with your collection is wage war, okay? And, and that part of the game I find actually very fun. So with that said, the challenge with Heroic Anthem KVK is that 
no longer does this promise of a end game, an end state, exist for free-to-play players where you can, for some amount of time, do what a pay-to-win player is doing. In fact, even the players who have paid to win to this point have the same problem where unless they pay more right now, <laughs> uh, right now at the time of Heroic Anthem KVK, they too can no longer do the things that they were doing before because the Heroic Anthem technology is so powerful. 30% attack, 30% defense, 30% all damage, 50 plus percent more troops on the field, right? Like it's astonishing. So both free-to-play players and pay-to-win players have just had their end game totally turned upside down, which is why everybody is really struggling a bit to grasp with, like, what is my relationship now with this game? And so here are the things that the developers are doing that may address some of this stuff, okay? So let's walk through this, and we'll keep in mind this context that, you know, I guess I should thread the needle on this, that although only 1% of the players are spending... 99% of the players contribute the most important thing in this game, which is community. And without the community, there's not a lot of people to share your collection with, right? Like collecting in a game where nobody's playing, it doesn't matter anymore, right? So I think the developers understand that free-to-play is really important to this game. And it's the backbone of our communities because they're the majority of the players that are playing the game, <laughs> okay? So free-to-play matters, and here are the things that hopefully are going to help free-to-play. All right, so first up, refreshing Bastion quests. We realize the, per the current Bastion quest pool is not optimal. So w let's start with that sentence because this is a big one. What that is saying, the quest pool is not optimal, is that players are struggling with the fact that there are so many training quests, right? Players are struggling with the fact that there are all these quests to give up your precious materials, right? And, and the developers themselves said, hey, we want to give you more materials. And then they have all these quests that take away your materials. So... They're saying, whoa, okay, so the quest pool is not optimal, so hopefully that means they change what these quests are, and you get less training quests, you get less quests that take away your materials, and there will be optimization in the logic for refreshing Bastion quests to ensure that refreshing will not give the same quest. So even if they don't change what the quests are, today you can cancel a quest every 30 minutes and get a new one, except most of the time you get the same quest over again. So it sounds like they're changing that so you can get a different quest. And one of the promises in a game like this, in the balance between free-to-play and pay-to-win, is that a free-to-play player can spend more time to get more value. And a pay-to-win player can do the same thing, but often they are paying money to avoid spending the time to get the same value that people are getting in a free-to-play way. So a pay-to-win player may not go and every 30 minutes remove all the Bastion quests that they don't want to do, but a free-to-play player will thankfully, hopefully, in the future now have the option to clear out these quests over the course of the day that they don't want to be doing, which is perfectly reasonable because every hour or so you might be logging in anyways to go send your gatherers out and spend like 30 seconds to do that. That's how you gather over 30 million resources a day, card up in the top, shameless plug. So next up though, crystal technology. This is huge. This is very important, right? This is what is throwing both spenders and free-to-play for a complete loop because regardless of how much you've spent, <laughs> square one, when you enter a Heroic Anthem KVK, relative to the people who tech up with Crystal Tech, okay? Crystal Tech is huge. So Crystal Technology, the Crystal System, will continue to be optimized in future updates. This is very good. We are considering the possibility of reducing the upgrade time for certain levels of the Crystal Mine, Crystal Research Center, and Crystal... Research Center Technologies. Okay, so this is very important. This is very important because what I have heard from free-to-play players, and I am observing this right now on my farm account, which is in Heroic Anthem KVK, is that I have plenty of crystals, but I'm, I don't have the speed-ups to use to speed up the research. So for these players that don't have the building speed-ups, that don't have the research speed-ups, but they're going to have plenty of crystals, Reducing the time is very crucial for making sure that free-to-play can advance further in the technology. That is very important and will bring more balance, depending on if they do this and how they do this, to the relationship between the people who spend the most and the folks that like had T5 before but either don't want to spend or are free-to-play. Now, the next thing is also very important, and they address the other side of the equation here for 
the balance of needing speed ups and needing crystals. Because if they actually meaningfully reduce or even partially reduce the amount of time it takes to do the crystal research, the next thing you're going to have a problem with is the number of crystals you have. There's no way to get all of the crystals you would need to max all your technology in Heroic Anthem. You must spend money. There's literally, it is not possible to free-to-play way your, your, yourself to max crystal technology. Um, even if you had all the speed-ups you needed, you'd never have enough crystals. So here we go. Crystals are an essential resource in Heroic Anthem KVK. We're looking over here. And currently, the ways to acquire crystals are limited. So we're considering adding crystals as a potential reward by defeating barbarians and destroying barbarian forts in the future update. So this will be huge. If they did both of these things, it would address both sides of the equation here. I need more crystals and I need more speed ups or uh, there needs to be less time requirement to do the crystal research so that the gap between the free to play players and the pay to win players is not quite so big. Because the magic of Heroic Anthem KVK, by the way, the developers like, they're watching. They see that so many people restart. They create new accounts because the early game is so fun. And guess what? Heroic Anthem KVK has recreated the early game. You need to do all the same things you were doing in the early game, from scouting to building stuff to teching up. It's the early game, and that's all really fun. The, the challenge is the balance of all of this. And the need to spend in order to achieve what you had before. And this is the next thing I want to talk about. Which is something that I've been really struggling to wrap my head around. But I think this, I think this summarizes why people are frustrated with, some people are frustrated with Heroic Anthem KVK. Which is that the feeling of loss is really strong. And it's hard to overcome. And what I mean by that is that players that are free to play don't have, don't feel like they have the same end game that they had before. They have lost the end game that they once had, right? That ability to go all in on a meta and really focus their account if they wanted. Not everybody does that, right? Not everybody does that. But the, but the more hardcore free to play players, they, they do that. Um, and the same is true of the spenders, weirdly enough, who um, they've gone, you know, and spent. 10, 20, $30,000. And like, yeah, all of that's really nice, but it doesn't hold a candle to heroic anthem technology. <laughs> Literally, like, it doesn't hold a candle to 30% all damage, and that's just one tech. <laughs> that's the last tech you can get, but it's just one piece of the tech, not to mention, again, 30% attack, 30% defense. So the players are experiencing a sense of loss, and to overcome a sense of loss, you need to have more than double the reward. And, and quite frankly, like if we look at the Heroic Anthem KVK rewards real quick, these rewards are actually pretty cool. Okay. I mean, let me, let me put it this way. Okay. And, I, and I'm not trying to sell you on this. I'm just, let me, let me just give me a second to explain this idea, which is okay. So if you already had T5 and we have lots of players in our kingdom that are free to play and they're max tech and they're max buildings, right? Like what if I told you there was a way to use all your building speed ups and your research speed ups to get legendary commander sculptures, a city skin, or even some, you know, equipment chests, legendary materials. That seems pretty good. It's no wonder the developers might be confused about why players don't like this system because they have literally given you a way to get rid of things that are no value to you anymore and turn them into some serious value. And we're going to talk about this in, in just a bit because one of the other updates in this patch is having to do with the recycle shop. But you can recycle all these materials that are like really, uh, I mean, they stop being useful to you into something really useful. And the problem I think players are having, wrapping their heads around this reward system, is that the feeling of loss of of what they once were doing is so strong that like this is not double the goodness that they were getting before. I think this is pretty cool. I think this is pretty good. But it's certainly not double what you were getting before. And if it was, it would be imbalanced. Heroic Anthem KVK will be so rewarding that everybody will be doing it at every opportunity. And like, hey, maybe the game should be designed that way. But realistically, if you're upset about Heroic Anthem KVK, there's no amount of facts that I can tell you about these rewards that would make them compelling to you. 
right? Like, it doesn't matter that these are the literal best accessories in the game. It doesn't matter that this is the best equipment in the game. And by the way, by by the count of the number of materials you spend, these give more stats than anything in the game. It doesn't matter that these are the most literal, efficient, but expensive <laughs> pieces of equipment in the game uh, by the number of stats they give. It doesn't matter that players who literally farm their way through KVK and Heroic Anthem and don't do very much, just like my farm is doing right now, could over the course of three KVKs get a city skin. That's all re like really good. People are laser focused on the things that they've lost because loss is painful. They've lost the ability to go in in a single KVK and get a city skin. And even though only 20 people per KVK were doing that, the feeling of loss is so overwhelming that that they, they it's hard to see past that to understand the wait a minute like literally everybody in three kvks could go and get like a city skin just by farming really like yeah i may not be explaining it perfectly but what i'm trying to convey is this idea that there was one thing that people were used to that expectation has changed and it's different, and unless the new thing is twice as good, of course people are gonna be upset about it, and of course it's never gonna be twice as good, because that would be imbalanced, it would be, anyways. Let's jump back to the dev notes. The next thing up here is a coalition rally exploit. Apparently, coalitions are of course only supposed to be able to launch one rally onto a target, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's some shenanigans where you leave a coalition, rejoin a coalition, you could have multiple alliances launching rallies on the same target from the same coalition. Uh, they're making it so that if you leave or join a coalition, then it's going to automatically cancel the rally, which makes sense. That's a good change, and that is not actually something it looks like that is being speculated that they might do. They're saying over here uh, that this is in the next update. So this is literally going to be in the next update. That's great. The next thing in here is the Alliance Recycle Shop. This is what I was mentioning earlier. We also want players to take advantage of the Alliance Recycle more often, so we're considering adding more items to be available to be sold in the Alliance Recycle Shop. Let me give you my two cents on this. Here is the Alliance Recycle Shop, where you can turn in stuff that theoretically you don't need anymore for things that you might want, like Alliance Currency. And the problem that I see is that a lot of players, most players, end up spending 10 gems a pop on things like Books of the Covenant. And it's pretty painful <laughs> to turn them in for I don't even know what fraction of a gem worth of value this is. Um, but I, I personally would almost rather hold on to these with the very distant and unlikely hope that they become worth more one day. Or even just to point to them because like, look at my collection of things in this game. All right, I would almost rather hold on to these than get this small amount of value that I might get turning these into alliance currency. And I and I get that that's a strange, weird feeling. But again, like humans are really uh, averse to loss. It feels like I'm losing two years worth of grinding barbarians and barbarian forts for like, I don't know. I, I don't know how much this would even turn into. Maybe one Civ swap token? Which is te technically 10,000 gems of value. I don't know. I'll have to be really low on alliance currency to really <laughs> go and make that change. I mentioned this because, you know, look, I don't know what they would add to the reclaim shop. I really don't know what they would add uh, that like, hey, like maybe we wanna get rid of ethel fled sculptures, right? Maybe there's something we would get rid of. I even hang on to my gold key commander sculptures over here. <laughs> All my excess legendary commander sculptures for the gold key commanders that I've already expertise because like, they were worth so much to me at one point. Is it really worth, you know, 50 compensation chests per legendary head at the end of Past Glory Stage 3 to turn these in? I would rather have 1,042 Cleo sculptures and to say, look at how many Cleo sculptures I have in videos than have, I don't know, the, the 50 minutes of speed ups at best per sculpture turned in. And I get that I actually have a, a lot of sculptures here, um, but my sense with the trade-ins is not that like oh man we really need like more stuff to trade in although that's phenomenal no complaints for me no complaints for me at all but just that like oh the value of some of these things is so low and i probably shouldn't even be complaining because 
at the end of the day, they were worth literally nothing before. And now they actually are worth something. So, okay, I'll take that. The last thing in here is that some of the skill descriptions are going to be updated. For accuracy, that's crucial. I'm glad that that is still happening. <laughs> oh, man. The skill descriptions have to be accurate. We make really important decisions about, like, what commanders we're going to garrison with based off of the skill descriptions. So this is really important. It, it impacts so many things. The actual skills of the commanders is not changing, so the actual performance of the commanders will not change. However, we will see a change to the descriptions, and as soon as we know what those are, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, and it does look like that is going to be in the next update. All in all, I feel like a part of what I wanted to do in this video is respond to, you know, some number of players who feel like, I'm going to quit the game now. Because I have to think that Lilith values and understands that free-to-play players are crucial to the ecosystem of Rise of Kingdoms. And it's not, people are like, eh, free-to-player needed for punching bags for pay-to-win. And it's like, no, that has nothing to do with why free-to-play are needed. Free-to-play are the, are the core of the community of Rise of Kingdoms. And without that community, there's no game. <laughs> That's the game, people, right? Like, the community is everything, right? We have these alliances, and there are 150-plus people that's community. These kingdoms are community. That is the most important thing. <laughs> so it, what I want to address is, and, and you know, look, if people want to quit, they want to quit. That folks would might play a game for like a year and then say, oh, okay, I don't like this update. I'm out. Like, of course, the developers are going to hear your feedback and take action. And I think this post is a solid starting point for what that could be. And and my hope is that we're able to get to a place where everyone is really happy with what the end game is in Rise of Kingdoms. I personally have enjoyed Heroic Anthem KVK, but the thing is that for me, it hasn't fundamentally changed the way that I play <laughs> because I'm, I just shifted what I spend my money on. I went from shifting you know my spending to bundles that gave me some speed ups and materials to now bundles that gives me speed ups and crystals and those crystals I use to turn into a currency and that currency I use for equipment. It's like all, honestly, not much has changed for me, but I get that for a lot of folks, the equation has changed profoundly. And my hope is that this starts to address it. And I hope that in this video, I, I really sincerely hope that I have conveyed some of what is, is painting free to play players, some of what is painting the pay to win players that feel like they're obligated to spend in KVK in order to maintain the same thing that they had previously for having already spent a lot of money in the game. And my hope, by the way, is that Strife of the Eight KVK is also a lot of fun. The balance of the technology, the crystal technology, is crucial to what that experience will be like, but the map design looks so good. Every kingdom in the new version of KVK Every kingdom is now a middle kingdom, right? The problem with KVK season one and two is you could be in a corner and two kingdoms could battle against your one kingdom in the corner. Huge problem. Her, the new version of KVK, Strife of the Eight, it fully fixes that problem where now you can have a 1v1 versus one of two different kingdoms or you could battle both at the same time if you're crazy, <laughs> right? But it is going to be a warrior KVK and that is going to be a lot of fun, I think. Literally, the starting zone is so small that if your kingdom can't fight your way out or ally your way into the next zone, like, pff, man, you may as well pack it in and go to your home kingdom to farm resources because that starting zone is so small. I don't know how you would fit a large kingdom into that starting zone. It's crazy. So I'm very much looking forward to that warrior version of KVK, and I hope, and, and I'm quite confident, that over time, the developers will address and continue to address the feedback the players are giving. But this idea that like, man, you've invested like a year or more in the Rise of Kingdoms and you can't wait like a couple weeks for the developers to respond. Like the reality is, is, is that it takes time. And if players want to quit, they, uh, they can do that. Like that's their prerogative. But I'd like to think that the developers are looking at the data and understanding the feedback. And as I said, you know, like the, the free to play community is the core to this game. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. And uh, until next time, 
You have fun. Smashing the kingdom. Or does it need to be like Vanquish the king kingdom these days? Is it Vanquish now? Is that is that what shows up in game? The whole the whole premise of Smash the Kingdom is undermined. 